All right, this is going to be a pretty straightforward tutorial of Cornerstone, the Son of Tyrim. 90% no credit skip because any percent sucks. So we're just gonna we're just gonna go ahead and get started. Um, you can set up a save to skip this cutscene. I'll just show how to do that afterwards. So for the no credit skip, you can't use the the load zone that goes directly to the credits. So we're going to. Do the minimum possible stuff to get to the ending the intended way. So time starts when you skip this cutscene. Normally in this game, it has like a save and quit kind of thing. There's no normal saves. You know, it behaves kind of like Dark Souls. And normally when you save and quit, you'll spawn back in exactly where you're standing. Uh, but if you save and quit while rolling, you'll actually get defaulted to a position on the island. A set position on each island and that completely skips over the uh the tutorial we don't have to go through that at all now when you start in we need to get some items that are pretty useful and we need to go all the way up there to get them so we're going to be boosting with the sheep uh there's two ways of doing so well two easy ways first one is to go up beside it and then spin and you'll get launched upwards Ba the boost basically happens whenever the object you're holding gets clipped into this the ground, basically. So you can get flung straight up, and then whenever you pause, you cancel your fall momentum. So just pause and you'll gently land. And the other way to boost that I found a little more consistent but takes a little more work is to place it there, roll into it, and grab it. And you'll be flung upwards so kind of you have to kind of play around with this um bonking into the ball usually gives you more horizontal momentum wow that didn't make it all right but try out both methods see which one works more consistently for you uh there's also you jump also one where you jump and you place it above you and then you like grab it and fling it into it it's really weird just kind of don't listen to Momo basically so whichever one you find more that works more often you want to get up on top of this roof which is kind of a long boost it's a little bit tight oh, also don't boost underneath the fence because you'll just go up and hit the fence and stop Oops. So just roll, grab, and then drift over here. If you're going like way, way, way too high, then you can pause in midair and you'll immediately start falling. Anyway, grab this nest and that gets you a key. For the next boost, you can either use the sheep or you can just use this nest. Either works, but come down here. We're gonna boost off this thing. Don't go under that thing or else you'll just get stuck on there. Don't go too close to this thing or else you'll get stuck on there. And the camera's kind of shitty right here, so you have to, like, kind of position it carefully. And then... This is no good. Because you don't want to talk to this guy. God damn it, game. You want to get up there. There's a... What blocking this thing, so getting up here isn't very useful, because you... It's technically possible to get through that web, but it's not consistent at all. So instead, just kind of boost up here. Oh my god, that's not going to make it. I'm getting extreme horizontal boosts now, and I don't want them. There we go. That time I didn't bonk, so I didn't get as crazy of a horizontal boost. Anyway, you get up here, and you grab the hang glider. And drop down here. You don't worry about cancelling your momentum. You can just keep moving after you land. And you have to death warp soon, so just take the damage. And talk to her, and she'll open up this door. So normally, on this island, you have to go go out over there somewhere, do some stuff. You go through a dungeon, and you end up getting a the plans for the raft, and then there's a convenient shortcut back to the to the town right here. But if you just jump into the wall and you mash E, you'll just use the lever to open up the secret entrance from the other side, and then you can go in here. And just roll into the trigger for the cutscene and skip it. 
and grab these materials, and then you can just death death abuse here. That warps you back to the start of the dungeon. You can just head on out. Even though we never actually open the dungeon, in fact, it's still blocked off. We can't go back in, but it lets you leave. And now we're already done with this first island, so before whoops, before you actually fall into the water, just open up the crafting menu and craft a raft. You either want to use just your mouse or just your keyboard. If you try to mix them up, then you'll just not get any good results. Like if you mouse over this one, it'll actually make the, ha the hang glider. So either use WASD in space or just use your mouse and click. Whichever one's more comfortable for you. And then get on the raft and start going. So these three islands we all have to visit. We can't go to the other ones with the raft, so... These three first. We need to go to all three. The order doesn't really matter, but it's most convenient to go here first because you get speed boots, then go here because you need to use the speed boots, and then go here because you don't need speed boots. You could, in theory, just do this one, then this one, this one, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so when you're sailing, you basically just need to go in a straight line. If you see any barrel spawn, hit them because they'll give you a speed boost. If you see any de debris spawn, go around it because it'll slow you down a lot. Like here's debris. I'll point out any other things that spawn along the way. This island, it's actually faster to death warp to it. And to death warp, while the screen is frozen, just hit E and hold back. And you'll fall off the boat. And then the shark will eat you. And since we've already loaded in the island, it'll just warp us up there. So skip the cutscene. And head over here to repair this stairway. You can... Oh, okay, sometimes it likes to break. Just walk away and go forward again. This game is well made. It'll be coming back here, so it's faster to do this than going all the way around. Ignore all the NPCs, you don't need them. You know, you want to get onto the spinny thing. So the easy, easier way is just go onto here, onto here. And then once you're on this, you can jump across and get boosted up here. And then just go back down over to here. Uh, the other way, depending on your timing, is you can actually get up here onto this wheel, and then jump up, and then run across to here. This is slightly faster, but it requires you to not mess up at all over there. And not mess up when you're jumping on this. So you boost across here. Make a hang glider. Roll across. And the key that you picked up in the first island works here, so you can just open it up. Now this tile is going to fall, and you want to try to ride it all the way down. Because gliding down with the hang glider is very slow. And pick up this chest for speed boots, they're very important. I need to make the speed boots and roll away. Because that gate will shut very close or very quickly. And now this puzzle is really annoying. Whenever you run on top of it, and whenever you run on top of a tile, it'll little lower after a short time. And even though we roll everywhere else, it's actually better just to, like, straight run across this. It's more consistent. I'm not entirely sure if straight running is a placebo or not, but I haven't messed it up since straight running. So, that's nice. And go around here. Immediately skip that cutscene. Now, there's a cutscene trigger here, but the quest item trigger is a bit larger. So if you go like this... Oh, I missed it. There. You can grab the quest item without actually triggering the cutscene. If you do trigger the cutscene, then just skip it. It doesn't matter. It only wastes, like, a little bit of time. And then you can just... Oh, no. What? That's... Okay, well, there's the, uh... There's the cutscene. I don't know why it triggered there, but... Anyway, just real quit out. And whenever you get a cutscene, uh, you can skip it as soon as the screen freezes when it's loading the cutscene. And then we can just... We'll warp out and make a raft. You can only fast travel when you have the raft, or if you get an extra item that lets you fast travel anywhere, but that's uh, way out of the way so we don't get it. 
So you can hit space, then right, then space to uh to immediately fast travel there. And we want to make another raft, but this guy wants to talk to you, and this ladder wants to suck you in. So you have to kind of go around and right in the middle. It's a little bit annoying. So you just carefully do that. And then you don't want to fall in the water because it'll kill your speed boots. So just kind of jump and then glide over there. And we're going over here to Rockwell. This island is actually like below the question mark. It's a bit weird. I don't know why the question mark's so far up there. But we just wanted to go there. Um, other things just that can spawn in the water are the purple plants, which pop and poison you, take damage. They're... You usually want to avoid them, because there are places where you don't want to die. Like these things. And there's also crates, which when you break them, they give you one of every resource, but you, they're not worthwhile getting. It would only save time if you get five of them, and that's pretty much never going to happen. Uh, here's a barrel. We'll see if it will load in the island first. Alright, there's a little speed boost that we get. And for this and every other island, as soon as it load starts, you can just quit out and warp back in. Alright, this is Rockwell. This is the worst island. This guy will take all of your resources if you get too close, so just go around him. And you normally have to, like, cover up those skeleton holes. But instead what you can do is just go through this window. Jump, go down slightly, and then go through. If you bonk into the top of the window, you'll just drop straight down into the water, and that's no good. You can just go through the window and hit that thing. Also avoid this guy, because he will talk to you and he'll, pull, he'll put you on the other side of the door. And then just stick to the right here, and you'll fall onto this part. And these things are rising up as you're going here, so if you go too fast, you'll actually fall into the water here. So just delay very slightly. Now, I think this is the longest load in the game, and then there's a cutscene after it. It's a little weird. So, go to the right here. This place is really annoying. Also, the audio likes to bug out. So what we want to do is get somebody to hit that door while it's closed. And he did not play nicely. So normally you have to go all the way to the top and then hit something and it'll open up the door. But if he hits it when the door is closed, or anyone really, it'll actually break the barrier that blocks it, and then once they're de-aggroed, the door will open up. You can go through. And this is a boss fight, but we're just going to ignore it. We can just go around, collect all these collectibles. I can't remember exactly what's required. Also depends on your the route of your building stuff. You can go through, skip that. This one, again, you can get the item without triggering the cutscene, but it barely wastes any time because the loads are counted out. And then you can try roll quitting out. For me, it just hasn't really been working, but you can try it. And then you just, if it doesn't work, you can just death warp out. Uh, if your body falls into the cutscene trigger there, the screen will just kind of go black and it's really confusing. And you have to skip it when you can't see it. So I just like triggering the cutscene and immediately skipping it since there's no loads or anything. It's real fast. Anyway, we got the second part so we can just leave. Oh, okay. Just didn't wanna, didn't wanna roll. Sometimes your inputs will just be eaten. Like there's nothing you can do about that. It'll just happen. So now we're going down here to the last island that we need the raft for. I think this one's the shortest one. This one's also, oh yeah, don't look back at Warrior because your game will lag. His reasons, because you need the engine. Another barrel, this is completely random. Barrel directly into debris, nice. Wow, amazing barrel lock. <laughs> the 
This is probably the most difficult island at first because it involves another boost that seems really random, but it's actually pretty okay. So, trigger this cutscene just so you don't trigger it later when you're actually trying to set something up. Open up this thing. This chest contains a sword, which we'll need, and now this pot is going to get us high. So, you need to position it back in the middle, so you can just kind of roll into it to make it go fast. Okay, I got stuck, so you can always just pick it up and set it up. So, we're going to use it to go really high, so... Easiest way to do that is to roll it on its side like this, so the top of it is down below. And you want to roll into the top from a short distance, and then right-click twice and you'll get sent flying upwards. So that's like a perfect boost. This is by far the most consistent way of setting up this boost that I've seen. It works pretty much every time. You can get the boost like with other setups, but they're generally not nearly as consistent. Um, usually if it's just like this, you just won't boost at all and you'll just kind of bounce the thing around. So. Set it up like this, go like that, and if you're going way too fast, you can just pause in midair and uh, gently drift down. So now we need to rescue this guy. So there's a there's an enemy crab that spawns when you go too far to this side. So you want to repair this thing from like back here, not all the way up there. And now, to manipulate the crab, you want to basically push this thing in the middle and go around this way. So the crab will go to the right of the thing, and then he'll get blocked by it, and then Roland just spam through this guy's dialogue. I did not push it far enough. That really sucks. That is embarrassing. If I push it far enough, then the cage would have stayed at the bottom, and then the crab would have just gotten blocked by it, and it would have been fine, but I screwed up. So now I need... Okay, if the crab trolls you and he's on the wrong side, you basically need him to go all the way around to the other side. Oh my god, he is not behaving. Alright, there we go. So now he should get blocked by the NPC, and then we can just finish off the conversation. You have to get all the way through this conversation for it to count. If the crab hits you, he'll cancel it. So once you get through it, you get the little jingle. You can just real quit out. And then, just make a raft. So normally it's a lot smoother, you just... You just need to push... Push the thing slightly further, and then the crab won't bug you at all. Alright, so now that we've gotten the three arbitrary quest items, we now have a boat when we talk to this guy. Oh yeah, there's something I never really explained. Something called roll jumping. Um, if you roll and you jump a certain timing, you can get like a boosted jump. Uh, they're really stupid and inconsistent. And they don't really make any sense. But usually like jumping to your boat, you'll try to do a roll jump to try to get on as high as you can on the ladder. Anyway, well now we're... Oh, see, that was a failed roll jump, so I grabbed the bottom. Now we're going to make our way over to Malu. This is the longest and the hardest level. That's this one down here. We don't need to go to these two. You'll see why in a little bit. This is barrel luck, though. What the heck? Can't get through this barrel lock and runs. Here you definitely don't want to take damage because you can actually die in a few places. Uh, 
Oh. And here you can make a sword while the thing is going up. Because you'll need it in a little bit. So in this area, there's wind that blows, I think it's every two minutes or a minute and a half, something like that. So it blows when you first enter in, that's fine. Doesn't matter. Go down this way. Try to roll jump across, that was good roll jump. Now here's uh, a web, you can just kind of roll through it like that. Just kind of push into it and then roll, and you'll go through. I'm actually pretty damaged because of that crab. And here we're going to use the windsurfer for the first time. Kind of position yourself here and build a windsurfer. Uh, that's not really going to be a good position. So what you want is it for it to be right up against the wall. What? Why is it not? Okay. Like this, and then hold jump. Okay, that was weird. We'll jump and it'll push you up to the top. Roll past this thing, skip that cutscene. This guy's probably going to kill me, so I'm gonna hit that checkpoint. I couldn't even... Okay, I did hit him, even though it didn't go off. What? What? It, what, I can't hurt him. Okay, that's new. Anyway, another windsurfer. This is like everything that could possibly go wrong. So that was a perfect creation because it's already in the wall, so you can just go up. You go too close to her, she'll talk to you, so don't. Instead, make speed boots. Uh, you're supposed to stick to the to the path here, but you can just kind of go straight through and you'll, you'll make it long before you die. So, put these switches. I'm gonna go this way to the door. And we're into the temple. The mazer, I think it's called the maze. These resources are random, so don't rely on getting good resources here. Throw that there. You want to throw it downwards. So, because you naturally just kind of throw it upwards. Now over here, now you want to clip through this thing. So stand right up against the wall and then look at an angle and make a windsurfer. It's not too specific. And then you can just kind of pick it up through the wall ride it through the wall, or through the door. I don't know why I grab that every time, that three wool is actually worthless. Whoops, not a windsurfer, a hang glider. Go across here. Get that switch to open up the door. Now these are crushers. Crushers are the worst thing in the game. Because they'll occasionally, like, they're supposed to go to one side, stop, and then go to the other side and stop, and go to the other side, but they're really inconsistent, and sometimes they'll just not wait. So they'll go here and instantly go back, and if you're relying on them stopping, you can just kind of die. So to play it safe, wait until they're going in that direction and then roll fast. Right here is an auto scroller, and we need about 38 wool. In order to get through this. Next part. So we're just going to stand here and just reload a few times. Because every time you reload, it'll spawn in another box of goodies right here. Oops. Do should be enough. So reload three times. 38. Now I'm going to make a safety save here. This clip is very dangerous, and if you fuck it up, you'll lose a shitload of time. So what you can do is just copy, paste, 
make a backup save. And just go ahead and attempt it. So we need to make a windsurfer because the windsurfer is going to be used to clip out of bounds. And we want to position it against this left wall. So just push it up here. Uh, it's slightly too far forward. This, this seems good. Now we need a hang glider. And what we're going to do is get in, in the windsurfer, jump up until we're out of bounds and then drift across to another room. What I do is go up and as soon as the things as soon as the windsurfer starts dropping, usually when you get off it kind of pushes you upwards and that lets you float across. So jump up and as soon as it falls, get off and you'll get pushed upwards and you'll drift across here. If you immediately see that you're not going to get the height, you can float back in bounds and try it again. Uh, if you do fall out of bounds and you're just not going to make it, You'll just have to reload and try it again. Uh, if you get here and you're like halfway through here, you'll just get stuck in the ground and that, that won't help at all. You'll have to retry it anyway. So open up this chest, you get a crafting speed. There's a safety health if you need it. More crushers. So here they did not pause. So if I assumed they were going to pause and I went, I would have just been crushed. And we can move on. There's another safety health here, so health is pretty easy. Now this is the boss fight. Normally there's four crystals that you have to smash, and then she floats to the ground and you can go bully her. Oh wow, the door closes if you don't go through. Never knew that. So what we're going to try to do is get her to destroy the crystals, and then we're going to two-cycle her. This cutscene is unskippable, because reasons. So head over to the first one. There's some wool here that we can grab conveniently. And then make a new sword, because you need a fresh charge of it. Get her stuff to attack the crystal, and then just spam click on her. And that's just the perfect timing to stun lock her. Occasionally, she'll just kind of decide not to get stunlocked. Usually, if she like bumps into something over there or something, but it doesn't happen too often. You can just kind of wail on her. When she gets close to half, get ready to leave. So as soon as, as soon as she flies away, run away. Go to this next crystal. Now I like waiting until. After she hits the crystal to make the sword, in case if she hits you while you're making it, it'll cancel it. So the same thing, make a fresh sword, smack her. Just keep clicking. And everything should go right and you'll get a two cycle. And she's dead. If she, like, decides not to get stunlocked and you actually have to fight her, it's pretty annoying. So you'll probably just not really attack her and just go to another crystal instead. So come up here, talk to this guy. This unlocks another NPC that you can talk to to finish off the quest. When you fall far enough away, it'll just prompt you to go back to the ship. go to, whoop, that's the wrong direction, mama. So there's three copies of the NPC, you want to talk to this one. She'll actually talk to you when you get close enough. And she does some voodoo magic. And that's the required plot thing that you need to enter in the last level. So just immediately roll pull it out. And we'll be on our way to the super exciting conclusion. Lost outdoor sailing section.
This is typically where you get the most barrels, but we already got like 30 goddamn barrels, so who knows what'll happen. You want to go, the trigger is kind of large. There's just a big bunch of clouds in this area, and then it's like a big area in the middle that you can actually enter. Uh, there's a, ah, there's this thing, the tower in front of it. So you just want to be like somewhere to the left of that tower. Wow, it spawned that underneath me. That's cool. So you see just hitting that purple thing took off half my health. Health doesn't really matter here, but if you hit multiple purple things, you will die. Enter in here. And one last thing can actually spawn right at the front here. If it's debris, then you get trolled real hard. <sighs> of course it's debris. So that's a big maze. You're supposed to use an item that you get from another island to go through the maze, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to go over here. So just kind of crash your boat over here, and when it lines up, just stop moving. And this is a mildly dangerous strat, so you might want to make a save here. Shouldn't you shouldn't mess it up? This is pretty easy, but you might as well. So you want to get up here, make a new hang glider. You want to jump, and then as soon as you hit the wall, pause. Because normally you cannot craft stuff in the air, but if you pause and then open up the crafting menu, you can craft a raft, and it'll craft where you're looking, so it'll craft inside of the wall, and then you can just kind of use it through the wall. And the raft is out of bounds, so you can just kind of leave. So just glide towards the wall, pause when you hit the wall, look to the side and make a raft. The angle is not too specific. If you look too far to the left, the raft will just fly in bounds. If you look too far to the right, you just won't be able to reach it. But just look about where I just looked, and it's easy. So this is the huge maze that you need to take the raft through. Even though we're... Or you have to take the mad goat through. Even though we're on the raft, this is still hecka faster than going through the going through the maze with the big boat. Also, whenever you enter in a raftway, you have your your hang glider out, and he just keeps it out, and it looks silly. So that's always a bonus. So you want to basically go around this first outcropping. And then you can see there's like an edge there, an edge there, an edge there, and then the furthest one. So the second furthest one is where you're going around next. So loop around this. And then you can see there's like a hole in the wall here. Go towards that. This is a big door that you have to like enter in a code to open. And then there's just a big hallway that you have to run through when it takes forever. So taking the raft is significantly faster. And the big black thing is the low zone for the final boss. So now you get your last bit of resources. Typically you only need the wool. You need to have at least 45 wool and then just a little bit of the rest of the stuff. I think it's just like 10 wood or so. 10 wood, 5 rock, 12 fire for everything else. So this is... So for the final boss, make speed boots. And roll forward and trigger the cutscene. 
The cutscene will move you in front of this rock, so don't immediately hold forward because you might get stuck in a pushing animation. If there's a rock here, you can just kind of go around it. Jump across here. That was a perfect roll jump. Yeah. Go up here, make a hang glider. Careful of these things because they can eat your jump, so I like to go around the left where you can't die a horrible death. And now go up here. You want to stand like on this line beside this thing and aim over here. And then you make a windsurfer. And that'll make it inside of the wall. So you can go and use it through the thing. And then aim straight here. Because if you go too close to this wall, you will get sucked in and stuck. So you want to walk straight across. And then once you're here, you can safely walk inbounds. And that completely skips over the, the final boss fight. And then you just need to grab this key and open up the door. And that's the game. Tyron found his father there in the dark, more helpless than he'd ever seen his father before. The men all gathered around Tyron to ask how he came to be there. He told them of the islands he'd visited, the people he'd met. The obstacles he'd overcome. So that's it. Um, there's only a few strats that are complicated at all. Most of the run is pretty comfy. Most of the run is pretty consistent. Uh, uh, we have a Discord server. It's linked on the leaderboards. Go ahead and join that and ask any questions if anything is unclear. I cannot make a 100% tutorial because there is no 100% category in this game. There is only definitely not 100% and then even less 100%. It's pretty good. And then this just the nice credits thing. For fun, you can you can ride this one one surfer into the uh, into the land here and you get eaten by a land shark. And then you become a windsurfer. It's always an important thing to do. It's tradition. Anyway, yeah. Uh, only other thing. So I said at the beginning you can make a start save to... To skip over the, the beginning cutscene. So we'll just erase these. So when you start out... You have the, uh... You have the intro cutscene, and then there's a black screen, and then it loads in the initial cutscene. So what you can do is pause the game during the black screen and quit out to the main menu. And even though it's completely black, the menu is actually open. So... So, here, pause. Once you have the cursor, that means you're paused. Hit down twice, and just spam space. That'll take you back here, and you'll have a save file. Time played zero. Copy that out into save three or whatever. And now you can start your runs from this. And it'll load in and just play the cutscene. You can start your timer and skip the cutscene and do your run. And that's it. Should be everything you need. Um, obviously, some things did not go perfectly well because. This game is a, a marvel of technology, so I suggest just watching whatever the current world record is alongside this and just noting how they efficiently do certain things. As I said, any questions, ask the Discord. And that's about it.